Throughout the troubles in Northern Ireland, many of the men and women who were working in the security services to stop the terrorists often used to refer to it as a dirty war. The goal, to save innocent lives, was a clear moral imperative. But the method very often used to recruit the killers themselves as double agents was fraught with every kind of moral hazard in decisions often made in the countdown to the acts of terror themselves. Today, in the case of one such agent, codename Steakknife, the Operation Canova inquiry cut through the fog. As the head of a notorious IRA torture and murder squad, it said, Steakknife probably cost more lives than he saved. But the families of the victims still seek justice and indeed answers tonight. The inquiry did not even confirm his real name, though it was thought to be Freddy Scapatici from West Belfast, who died last year, aged 77 without ever facing justice for his crimes. The height of the troubles in Northern Ireland. A time of killing and chaos. The Canova investigation says British agents operated like mavericks to infiltrate the IRA and the dark arts were at play. But one British spy was so deeply embedded in their ranks he became head of the IRA's internal security. Yeah, I was the heart of things right. for a long time, right? right? This is the voice of Agent 6126, codename Steakknife, widely known to be Freddy Scapatici. Scapatici was a cold killer for the IRA, and he rubbed shoulders with those at the very top. But this investigation has found he cost more lives than he saved and he should have been charged with murder. Claims that he was responsible for saving countless or hundreds of lives are hugely exaggerated. Most importantly, these claims belie the fact that Steakknife was himself involved in very serious and wholly unjustifiable criminality. Canova says Scapatici did risk his life spying for Britain, the punishment here for being a tout was death. The twisted irony is his job for the IRA was to torture and execute those suspected of being British agents. These are the faces of some of his victims. John Dignam, who was 32, his body left naked at the roadside. Caroline Moreland, murdered at 34. Her three children grew up without a mother. And here, Scapatici's own chilling words describe how confessions were extracted. The standard procedure is to strip them yeah. and debug them, yeah. right, just to see if they're, they're wired up or whatever, right, yeah. and usually put a boiler suit on them they're not dead, right, you know, and they think they're going to go home, but they don't. We now know Scapatici's British handlers let people die to keep their spy in place. Canova says handlers were complicit in some of Scapatici's crimes, but they haven't been named and no one will be prosecuted. Families who lost loved ones chose not to speak today. Their lawyer is calling for a public inquiry. No prosecutions. Mm. Does that mean that justice is still missing? For some, justice is finalised in truth recovery, and that has happened here for many of them. But for others, justice is vested in a criminal prosecution, and that hasn't happened. The scale of Scapatici's crimes has led to questions about who knew what. The Canova team denied it would have reached the Prime Minister. This still should not have happened. How and there should have been supervision. How high did it go? We didn't go any higher than the organisations dealing with the agents. That's it. The UK government is refusing to comment at this stage, but Northern Ireland's First Minister has apologised. I am sorry for every single loss of life, and that is without exception. Freddie Scapatici always denied being a British agent. I'm telling you I'm not guilty of any of these allegations. He was later given a new identity and allowed to live the rest of his days under the protection of the British state. Don't take any more photos of this house, I'm telling you now. Because if you do, I'll come out and I'll do you. He died last year, taking his darkest secrets with him to the grave. A British spy who got away with murder. Peter, well, as you say there, really, it's a pretty dark chapter. What are the important questions that remain to be answered about steak knife? And does the inquiry tell us anything new, in fact, about the troubles? Well, as is so often the case, the question we're asking now is who knew what and when? How high 
does this go? The Canova report here makes some recommendations, first of all, asking for a national day of reflection and for an apology from the British Prime Minister and from the IRA, which of course officially no longer exists. But the families who lost loved ones are keen to make sure that this doesn't just become the next chapter chronicling Northern Ireland's dark past. They've been told for so long that Steak Knife was this golden egg of British intelligence. Well, the Canova report tells us that he was killing British informers, people who were helping Britain, but also some of the people he killed were innocent. They were accused by him because they got too close to exposing his secret and he killed to cover his tracks. And we've been told previously about collateral damage that ultimately the agents regarded that um, steak knife, the intelligence he gave was worth more than the lives he took. Well, Canova says that he was more dangerous than he was useful. He may be dead. That's not the case for all those round about him. We have found one of his handlers. He's chosen not to comment. We've chosen not to identify him at this point. But that's what gives families hope, that there could be more answers and potentially justice.